There's a broad misconception that the field service technician career path is confined only to the world of cable or telephone service providers, but it holds so much more than meets the eye. The field service industry is filled with IT gurus, electricians, biologists, robotics engineers, mechanics, systems experts, and plenty more. So what can a career path in field service look like? Hi, and welcome to TechWorks Talks. Okay, so I have the opportunity to sit with two team members of Source and Source TechWorks. Could you guys introduce yourselves, maybe give your title, your experience with field service, and maybe a fun fact? Oh, and a fun fact. <laughs> Hi, Denitria. I'm Eric Lomascolo. I'm Senior Vice President here for Strategy and Engagement. And one of the primary responsibilities that I have is uh, as part of the Source TechWorks program. That's everything to do with our field engineering network that we've built up over the 20 years. I have other responsibilities attached with that as well. But uh, as we're talking with our field engineers here, I'll leave that at that level. A fun fact for me might be that during my military career, I was an in-flight refueling specialist, otherwise called a boom operator, which is just a glorified gas attendant in the air. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Nietzsche, Eric, very nice speaking with you. My name is Cameron Truss. I'm the Senior Technical Recruiting and Solutions Manager here at Source Support. My team is responsible for our field engineer recruitment, as well as assisting with our field engineer certification, quality, um, and compliance roles. And a fun fact about me, which is pretty actually rare in the location that we're in, I'm actually a born and bred Atlanta. Been here my entire life and I'm one of the few that is actually from the city. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode, we're going to just start as a basis. What is a field service engineer? Right. Well, I'll, I'll take a first swing at that. Okay. What I like about calling a field engineer or a field service engineer, the first part of that is the word engineer. And engineering is all about solving problems at some level or another. In this particular case, it's the repair of something that's technical on site for end users. And there's many settings for field engineering. Some settings are consumer-based, right? Who's going to fix your uh, washer, dryer, your refrigerator, your TV. But here at Source, we're all about the business side. So this is around repairing products that are in a business setting, whether that's in a data center, whether that's in a hospital environment, or even in an industrial setting for some of our customers. So as the name implies, field means it's out there in the world. Here at Source, it means globally anywhere that these businesses may reside and use these products. To me, a field engineer is a problem solver, like Eric mentioned. When our customers have something go down or something doesn't go the way they plan, they're the face of our business that goes out in front of the customer and helps them get back online. Their customers are supported as well as the products that they've sold their customers are supported. We like to at times say that some of our field engineers can also be a jack of all trade. They may go in to try and solve one problem, but they may identify an additional one or our internal team may find an additional one. So they're an individual that is our face out in front of the customer to help support the problems that they may run into. Yeah, and Cameron, as you're talking about that, we talk about customer, right? Mm -hmm. That they're going out to work to help the customer get their product back online. Of course, from, from our point of view, our customer is in fact the OEM that produced the equipment. This customer is our OEM's customer. And that by and large is where the field engineer has to really bring their A game as they're working with the customer. Many times they'll be in situations where the customer is looking over their shoulder or trying to find out what's going on. So they have to bring a good level of customer service experience with them. They also have to be cognizant of the uh, location or environment they're in. And we're in a lot of environments which are deemed mission critical or healthcare related to where we're on the bleeding edge of certain technologies. So that could lead to high-end financial sectors. It could be in patient operating rooms. And it could also be in unmanned data centers across the world. So they have to be able to effectively assist customers in a multitude of environments. That makes sense. Yeah. And like you guys said, being problem solvers and more than just the direct to consumer market, your cable guy or your person that sets up your phone line, it really is about helping the, the OEM and 
representing like your technical skills with kind of those bigger scale technical machines and devices, but also still managing that customer expectation with those. That's right, Tanitra. And, and uh, you said something that is a fun thing to talk about, right? The difference between the cable guy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or the telephone guy. Is that still a thing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, coming to, to work on your cable, your internet, you know, many times we've all experienced it. We're on long hold times where we get the response of should be out there between the hours of eight and five and they show up <laughs> at six, right? These environments, unlike consumer, are very very different. I think Cameron uh, used the terminology mission critical in the data center world. It's, you know, it's all about keeping systems up and running and never coming down 24 by 7, 365. You know, in the medical environments, it's making sure that the equipment is back up and running so that in the hospital environment, they can continue to serve their patients and make sure that there's uh, nothing down when they need it the most. For sure. So Eric, you kind of went into the different industries that source supports. Could either of you tell me a little bit more about some of the technical skills and soft skills that you've kind of seen out in the field that have been useful? I think it's important to have a good balance of both the technical and soft skills, especially since we'll be in environments all over the world. You could be the smartest engineer out there and have every certification under the sun. But if you don't know how to handle a customer in an escalated environment, you could actually cause more damage to the relationship than the actual product itself. In terms of technical skills, it's important to have experience in the type of environments we support, whether it's data center, report, you know, rack and stack, server build outs networking configuration, as well as as we expand in the medical environment, experience with medical device support in hospitals or doctor's environments, but they could also be in optician and ophthalmologist environments. So it's, it's important to have experience in the products that we're servicing, but it's also just as important to have the proper soft skills, customer service skills, de-escalation techniques, but also the ability to want to learn and train because we do offer a lot of additional training certifications on the product that we have. If you don't have direct experience, but you have related experience, we can assist you in filling in the gaps as well as offer whether customer backed or source backed training opportunities to continue your education in the field. Yeah, I think that those soft skills you talked about is so important. And it's probably the most challenging part of this kind of work. If you like working with people, this is your place to be, right? Because this is each individual that you run into is different in the conversations that you'll have. But the biggest thing to keep in mind are that these customers are at a vulnerable point right now. When their system is down, it could mean that their business is losing money. It could mean that they can't service patients. So as you might expect, as we all expect, when our car breaks down or something happens in our household and we're upset by it, there's a lot of frustration that can be built up. And the more time that goes on when it's not fixed, the more frustration that builds up. So one of the key attribute of helping de-escalate is always being out there at the time we say. And when we talk about a time frame for when we're going to show up, we want to make sure that we are as on time as possible because otherwise the later we get, the more frustration that builds. That helps things kick off on the right foot. Now you're there and now you're able to start working with the customer in, in terms of repairing the equipment so that they get back up and running. The technical aspects that you raised, Cameron, right? Some of the folks I imagine that, that are interested in what TechWorks has to offer, this ability to be in a gig work economy here can be for someone who's not done any of this work before to those that have been, you know, veterans of this for 20, 30 years or more. So some of the experience comes from just doing it. Some of the experience comes from some self-training, things like getting your A-plus certification, getting hands-on, being a help for somebody who knows how to do the work so that you can start to gain that experience. And to Cameron's point, we've got a lot of educational capability where you might be interested in something else other than data center. You might come in as data center, but there's a lot of things in the medical technology space that are so close to data center in terms of IT experience. 
the challenge becomes when it goes a little bit beyond the data center and it's more now I'm in the mechanical. So what experiences can you bring to bear on those? So we have plenty of opportunities to help you grow in whatever way you wish, but the soft skills, very critical. Many times we can teach the technical skills to where you need them to be for the specific product, but those soft skills are critical. Exactly. Both of you have mentioned mission critical, like the term mission critical in your descriptions. Could you go into like a little bit more about what mission critical means? And that can be, that might be different for different environments and possibly the difference in soft skills that an FE may have to switch to in each environment. And I guess for context, I didn't really know what mission critical meant until I came to source. So to someone who is maybe coming out of school or looking into this type of work, what does mission critical in environment look like and how might it change from industry to industry? So mission critical would be environments or products and environments that are key to the operation of that customer. For example, if we have a piece of equipment that supports financial transactions, these could be processing thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions every day. So it's important for them to be up and running because even dropping for just a couple seconds can mean loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars just in downtime. They could also be in hospitals and operating rooms where they're servicing a patient on a uh, key piece of equipment that not only affects the health of that patient, but also the productivity of that hospital. If they're you know, a cardiovascular hospital specializing in heart treatment, if they have ultrasounds or catheters or any type of equipment that supports those procedures go down while a patient is on the table, that is obviously a very big concern. So we want to make sure that the products that we're supporting had proper preventative maintenance, or if we are out there to solve a break-fix opportunity or replace even something as small as a power supply that that piece of equipment is up and functional before it goes back into service. I think I would add to that based on your question there, Denitria, this notion of the environments and how they might be different. In a data center environment, you're working with individuals at customer sites primarily that have some level of knowledge themselves around the product in such a way that they could look at it, they could see what you're doing. They want to stick around while you're doing it. They're the ones that are going to be like, how you doing over there, right? You should be done over there, right? But they expect that you're following a process and that you know what you're doing, that you, when you're walking into the environment, because there's so many different products from different OEMs, they are expected to know when they come on site. What does that look like? And then, you know, from a medical technology space, you know, as Cameron was talking about that environment being very different, it's about patients, it's about productivity and the uh, hospital environment, right? As much as we like to say hospitals are there to help, they are 100% but they're also there to make money as well. So they need to stay productive, make sure they have those procedures go through. The difference sometimes, many times, when our field engineers go on site, they're trying to find where it is in the hospital that this piece of equipment is. If it's on wheels, it could be anywhere, right? Uh, (laughs) If it's a large piece of equipment, you know, we know if it's in radiology, we know where to go. But if it's something like uh, given an ultrasound, right, cart that's moving, you know, from place to place and they need to find it, they need to find somebody to go <laughs> to go find out where it is. Again, the pregame is there to help. Who's my main contact? Who should I be there? But the end user there, the customer that it has broken, it may not be the same person that saw it break. They may have no idea what's wrong with it. Many times those customers, if something breaks, they throw it to the side and they get another one so that they can keep doing what they're doing. And they really don't even have time to try to think about what that uh, product's doing wrong. And then our field engineer shows up and while Bob was the one who was using it when there was a problem. Now we're talking with Jane and Jane really has no clue as to what happened to the product. They just need it fixed because it's out of service. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like you said, hospitals and even clinics sometimes are kind of go, go, go. So they don't necessarily need to worry about like what specifically is broken. They might just toss it to the side and they're like, somebody else handle this while I attend to a patient. Right. Yeah. It stopped working. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's, that's, what they, that's what they know. Yeah, that's the uh, diagnosis. And I guess to kind of round out everything, what would you say to someone who is interested in field service engineering or someone who just has hands-on technical skills, they like working with their hands, but is maybe just hearing about field service engineering for the first time? 
I'd say definitely look out for more information that could support your interest in it. We obviously offer a lot of opportunities inside source support and we support a wide range of customers. So if you're looking to grow a certain skill that you may not have, we have those opportunities for you. But also if you're looking to expand upon an experience you already have, or if you want to go to the next level of training, definitely reach out, definitely inquire. There's a lot of avenues to receive information from source support. But also there's a lot of things out in the industry to look as the industry is changing into, you know, this idea of gig work and being able to manage your own schedule. There's opportunities out there to expand your professional aptitude that you may not necessarily have thought about beyond not only the W-2 environment, but also the current opportunities you're working in now. Yeah, I find a lot of our field engineers that are out there in our network have, may have come from a background where they've worked for one or two OEMs before. And part of the reason why they're coming into our network is because they like the gig work. But another part, it seems like we're hearing more and more through, I think, some of the survey information that you've been getting, Denitria, is this notion that our field engineers want variety in what they do, right? When they work with one OEM, it's the same thing day in and day out. And there might be other skills that our field engineers have and want to use and have some variety in what they're doing. And so source support is a place where field engineers, those aspiring to be field engineers can get that variety, get some of that training that they otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to get. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to sit down with me and kind of go into this broad topic, but maybe narrow it down into something to chew on. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Denitria. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Cameron. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you want to learn more about field engineering with Source TechWorks, visit sourcesupport.com slash techworks. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Source Support Services for updates, clips, and more. Next time, we'll dive into what it means to freelance in the field engineer industry. So remember to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube and most other places you get podcasts. And until next time, thank you for your support.